what's going on everybody welcome back to another jms talks i thought i would do a follow-up video to that wildcats wildstorm relaunch video that i put out last week which was uh it's a little spicy yeah it got a lot of comments a lot of uh uh back and forth between uh the people some people liked it some people didn't like it you know there were some good conversations there were some maybe uh salty feelings salty hurt feelings out there you know like there's always going to be uh, but I saw this article today, and I, I just want to touch on it again because this was one of the things I was wondering about, which is uh, what happened to Warblade and Mall in this relaunch. They they were not shown in any of the uh, promotional art. Uh, and I, I'd just like to say, if if the, if you're the kind of person that gets offended easily by these videos, or you know, I, I trigger you in some way because I'm I'm not liking something that you like, let me tell you something. Please continue to watch. Hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and join me in the comments. Let's have a conversation. I'm always open for good conversation, even if you want to argue. That's all right with me. So here we go. The Wildcats relaunch is missing two iconic members. The Wildcats are returning to comics for the first time in years, but classic members <clears throat> from the Image Comics debut aren't going along for the ride. <clears throat> and again, as always, guys, I don't know if I got some kind of bug. Uh, We'll see how long my voice holds up, but I'm feeling kind of rough. But I just want to get down here and touch on this real quick uh, before I pass out and went back to bed. Uh, so here we go. Uh, debuting 30 years ago, Jim Lee's Wildcats were a few, <clears throat> a few of the faces defined. Jim Lee's Wildcats were a few of the faces that defined comics in that. It's supposed to be that. Faces that define comics in the early 1990s. See, if you if you struggle with, with dyslexia, or are the issues when you're trying to read uh, and think and talk at the same time, it would help if the editors actually put, you know, spell checked here, you know, and just made sure this made sense. So Jim Lee's Wildcats were a few of the faces that defined comics in the early 1990s with their book being one of the first titles ever published by image comics. And that, yeah, that's true. Wildcats again, like my love for Wildcats goes way back. Love Wildcats original series, love the original storyline. To me, the, the stories were fun and exciting. The team is an is an important part of the comic book history. <clears throat> now, a new Wildcats title, which again, like I said, I'm not extremely happy about or excited about. I'll say that. I'm not extremely excited about. And I'll say that uh, is on the horizon, but it looks like a few iconic members of the team aren't coming out to play again, which is a shame. Which is a shame. The promo image for Wildcats relaunch relaunch features many of the classic heroes, but classic members Warblade and Maul are nowhere to be seen, despite their being a part of the original team. When they debuted in 1992, their absence may be to simply make way for other members. Which, if you're gonna reboot the team, just reboot the team. You know, I, I don't like the whole idea. Like, well, let's mix it up because it's not it's not the Wildcats. You know, uh, in my opinion. But you know, whatever. Moving on. <clears throat> but it could also be a conscious decision to move away from a rather defining feature of early image books. So yeah. So this kind of just breaks down. You can read the entire article here from. Uh, is this CB? Yeah, CBR. I'm sure there are other places you can find this article. Well, this basically breaks down uh, Maul, breaks down uh, Warblade. Uh, but I want to get to the point here of why. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Warblade and Maul were ripoffs of Marvel com characters. This is what this whole section here is going to annoy me. Like, they're not ripoffs of Marvel characters, they are derivative, much like everything in the 90s was derivative of each other. Just because a character happens to have metal claws or is, is uh, big uh, and hulking doesn't mean that they're ripoffs of different characters. But the thing that bu bugs me about this is they're going to talk about these characters being ripoffs and why they wanted to leave them on the shelf. But other characters that are clearly derivative as well made the book. It just doesn't make any sense. So <clears throat> the original founders of Image Comics were known for working on some of Marvel's biggest books. This included Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld. And, and Mark Silvestri and Uncanny and, and Wolverine. Obviously, Tom McFarlane on, on Spider-Man. But as far as the X-Books go, you can't you can't discount Mark Silvestri's run on Uncanny and Wolverine and Wills Protasio on X-Factory and on Uncanny X-Men as well. And they all had characters that were very derivative of, the, of their Marvel co counterparts. Some maybe more uh, fresh and inventive than others and some more maybe right on the nose. But still, we live in the comic book world here, right? Everything is derivative. It really is. You break it down, there's derivative characters all over by the way drinking game every time i say derivative take a shot somebody's already drunk <clears throat> uh this includes jim lee and rob liefeld whose work on marvel's x-men and x-force respectfully had the founding of image jokingly referred to as the exodus Ooh, uh, so funny 
Perhaps due to this, <clears throat> there were a few uncanny similarities between many of the X or images founding books in Marvel's Merry Mutants, particularly in Jim Lee's Wildcats title. It's not particularly in the Wildcats. It was it was all over the place. Cyberforce too, which Cyberforce was originally pitched to Marvel to be a new X book. And uh, you could actually break should break down a video about that and what I would speculate were the characters that were supposed to be actual Marvel characters that that uh, Sylvester had to go and then make new stand-ins for Cyberforce. But this isn't about Cyberforce. This is about Wildcats. In the case of Warblade, his powers literally involved metal claws, and his name started with W, <sighs> made the Wolverine similarities impossible to ignore. Likewise, Maul's being a scientist, it turns into a, a big, angry, and green and purple was very similar to the Hulk. Now, the thing that bugs me about this is that's just, yeah, uh, Warblade was absolutely a derivative of that that style of character. You know, if you're, you're building a, a team character back in that day, you wanted a big guy. You wanted, you know, like, your Maul, you know, was like, you know, the, the Colossus, or, you know, like, uh, what was uh, what was the X-Force character? Warpath. I think it was that uh, Rob had... <clears throat> You wanted big characters, you know, um, strong guy, X, X factor. You wanted big characters, oh, at least one big character in the team. You wanted one character with claws or some kind of uh, cool aesthetic like that, swords or whatever. Uh, one character with guns and, you know, you, a couple hot babes doing their things. You know, there's there were certain roles that you would do when you made a team book back in the 90s. So Warblade definitely facilitated that aspect of it. The fact that you're saying because he's got metal claws and his name starts with a W that he's automatically a Wolverine ripoff. <clears throat> to me, a ripoff of a character is a character that has a very similar backstory as another character. That's a ripoff. Derivatives are just like, hey, it reminds me of this character. You know, Wolver or Warblade reminds me of Wolverine because he was the guy in the team with the claws. You know, his claws get really big. But he had uh, like... <clears throat> I always referred to him as like the, the T-1000 of the Wildcats, right? You know, because his claws could morph into different, not only like bigger versions of, of claws, but they could morph into different weapons, crew weapons, swords, axes, you know, whatever. Um, he was he was very much a different character than Wolverine was. Uh, not a ripoff at all, a derivative, yes. Maul being a scientist, yeah, Bruce Banner scientist, you know, makes himself the Hulk and experiments and all this kind of crap. Uh, but Maul was purple. I mean, the thing that was cool about Maul <coughs> is he would actually get <coughs> dumber the bigger he got. So it was a cool dynamic. Like he, the matter is Hulk got the stronger he got, you know, uh, the bigger Maul got, the dumber he got, the more, uh, he wasn't able to control himself. It was, it was a cool dynamic. Uh, again, not ripoffs in my opinion, derivatives. Uh, the line lineup of the new Wildcats team features characters who are considered to be much more original than Warblade and Maul. <sighs> it's likely that in celebrating the, thir the, the 30th anniversary of the Wildcats, Jim Lee wanted to see his creations move forward away from their rip-off roots. This is just bullshit article. Like I don't like this terminology at all. It's just ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, the thing about what's funny about this is you're still including characters like gambit or gambit well, here we go characters like grifter who is a, a direct derivative of gambit you can't say that he isn't you know you just pretty much put gambit put a mask on gambit and gave him guns uh, otherwise the characters are very similar in, in agility they both have the trench coat you know they, they have that classic jim lee 90s look i mean that grifter was absolutely the gambit of the wildcats and zealot was you know, a derivative of uh, Wonder Woman in in a lot of ways with the the Amazon women, the warrior women race, you know, uh, but they're still in the book. They're still in the book. They're definitely, definitely derivatives, or if you want to call them ripoffs of other characters, they're still in there. So the the idea that uh, Void, Void uh, is a derivative of Jean Grey, in my opinion, you know, like all these characters <clears throat> came from somewhere else they were inspired they were inspired characters of characters that these guys who worked uh tireless hours and tons of different pages over the years working on x-men brought those sensibilities over and created their own teams you know and they created stuff that worked that sold at the at, at the moment uh this it doesn't make sense that you would exclude just these two characters based on that alone um now if you want to say like well it's dc and they're too close to marvel characters and that's why Jim Lee's like, let's, or DC and Jim Lee are like, let's move forward 
from these characters a little bit because we don't ha- want to have that Marvel feel within the DC universe. I guess I could understand that. But still, if you are launching a book on its 30th anniversary, a uh, seminal book in the image title, in the image line, by one of the greatest creators and, and biggest names at the time, you'd want to see all these characters come back. The fans want to see all these characters come back in their entirety. They want to see the original team. Again, like I said before, take these teams, put them in their own pocket universe, and uh, relaunch if you want to relaunch or keep them in the same continuity. But give us a feel for the Wild Storm characters are supposed to be. Don't shoehorn them into a universe that clearly is not created for them or that they fit into. Uh, again, I'm not ex- extremely excited about this. More stuff coming out like this just makes it makes me less and less excited about the relaunch of any of the Wildstorm characters within the DC universe. Uh, so, but again, look, if you're excited about this and you're looking forward to it, let me just say right now, by all, by all means, be excited about it. Go read it. Go pick it up. Go buy it. You don't need to jump into comments and just be like, oh, I like it. I can't wait for it. You know, blah, blah, blah. Look, this is just one man's opinion. One man's opinion that's based, uh, I'm a fan. I followed these comics since I was a kid. I followed these characters since I was a kid. I feel very strong about how they are used and how they are abused. So this is straight up my opinion. If you don't agree with me, that's great. Jump in the comments and you know, we can definitely talk about it. But again, if me saying something negative about these characters anyway diminishes your excitement or takes away from your excitement, if you are excited, then uh, you might have an issue within yourself. You know, I don't give it, well, well. Trying not to swear on this channel, but I already did, I guess, earlier. But look, I don't care if anyone likes the stuff I like or dislikes the stuff I like or dogs or things I like. That doesn't change the fact I'm still going to like it. I don't know where we went in society that now uh, people have to give their two cents because someone has a different opinion of them, of them or other than them, themselves, you know. <coughs> oh, I'm losing my voice. <coughs> losing my voice and I'm dying. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you joining me for this video. If you like this content you like this channel please hit the like hit the subscribe hit the bell for notifications become a member of the channel and uh yeah join me in the comments below let's talk about it. i'm always interested in engaging in you whether we agree whether we don't agree but let's keep it civil let's keep it civil if we can so all right guys i will talk to you all later peace hey everybody before you go did you know i have my own comic book called reaper destroyer on indiegogo now it's an action sci-fi adventure that captures everything about the dark heroes of the 90s that we love but with a modern day twist If you haven't yet, please consider backing today. There's a link in the description below, and I will talk to you all later.